What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. In today's video, we are going to be configuring our very first Bitmain Antminer S19J Pro. This is our very first time of configuring and getting our hands on a Bitcoin ASIC miner. And so in today's video, we are going to be going through a step-by-step -step guide of how to configure this unit from start to finish. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at Wadham. Wadham is a complete Bitcoin mining solutions provider and the largest distributor of Bitcoin mining equipment in the United States. Wadham is your one-stop shop for everything ASIC mining, from Bitcoin miners ranging from the S19 Pro Hydro all the way up to the Antminer S19J Pro. If you're looking to take mining to the next level, Wadham has you covered. With facility build-out services, turnkey mining containers, power transformers, and finally complete hosting services. Check them out at the link down below in the video description. Thanks again to Wadham for supporting the hobbyist miner community. Welcome back miners. So I am hyped. This is our very first Bitmain Antminer S19J Pro. And I am stepping into this, learning this for the very first time. So if this is your first time configuring an S19J Pro, awesome. We're gonna do it together. And by the end of this video, you and I both will be mining Bitcoin. So something to keep in mind, this type of uh, Bitcoin miner, you can't go ahead and plug in from here into a traditional outlet. It's not gonna work. It uses too much electricity. So please make sure that you have a 20 amp or a 30 amp circuit that's 240 volt. This unit is the 104 terahash unit and it's estimated to use around 3,050 watts total at all times, which is way too much for your traditional home outlet. In addition to that, this is not wireless, so you are going to need ethernet. So to go ahead and jump in, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step guide together. We're gonna get this thing plugged in, ethernet plugged in, and then we're gonna jump over to the computer and do a step-by-step -step guide of how to find this unit on your network, as well as get started getting it on a pool getting it configured and getting it hashing. So let's dive in. All right, so let me show you guys where we're going to be putting this unit inside of our mining room here, still under construction. We have a spot dead ahead. So I'm gonna talk a little bit louder in here because of all the fans and all the noise. But as you guys can see, we have our ethernet set up and ready to go. And we do have our two C13 cables ready to go as well, going into a PDU. And from there, going in to our wall outlet, which is a 30 amp 240 volt. Let's take a step inside and see what exactly we're at currently for our wattage so we can do the math after we're up and running. So we're at 1,800 and we'll say 1,830, let's say 40 to be safe. So 1,840 watts currently that's being used as an octo miner plugged into that as well as a handshake mini ASIC gold shell miner up top here. So that's our place. Let's get this in place now. It is heavy. So let's see if we can do this with our GoPro as well. Don't want to drop it. A little too expensive of a unit to go ahead and drop. Now this is not going to be our end all location for this ASIC. This is just going to be for our testing tonight. All right, intakes are in the front with our fans here. Our exhaust is in the back, which works out well with our mining room. We have our cold side in the front and we have our hot side in the back. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Now keep in mind with ASIC miners, the hotter the room temperature around the ASIC miner, the louder the unit is going to be. So I'm gonna take a step back here for the microphone to help out a little bit. And our unit is up and running, it is spinning. You can see our link light is on. So let's close this door and jump over to the computer and let's go ahead and get that thing configured. Okay, miners, let's get into this. Who's ready to get their Bitcoin ASIC miner up and running in no time? Our goal by the end of this video is to have you and I mining Bitcoin on our very first ASIC miner. Cause guess what, PSA, this is my very first time doing this, but I've done my research and hopefully I can streamline this and make this easier for you. So step number one, go to bitmain.com. Once you're over there, go to customer support at the top and go down to firmware download. 
Once that web page loads, on the left hand side, you'll see a drop down menu. Select the drop down menu and go to the very bottom here where it says Others. Once Others is selected, click the other drop down box and select IP Reporter. IP Reporter.zip comes up. Click Download on the right hand side. Once that folder is extracted, run the IP Reporter program by right clicking on it and going to Run as Administrator. This will go ahead and run the program and it will pop up with a window which is the bitmain specific ip reporter our next step is to go ahead and walk over to our bitmain asic miner and to the left of the ethernet port is a button for your ip reporting hold down that button for five seconds and then come back and click start on the IP reporter. What will pop up is the IP address and as well as the MAC address of your Bitcoin ASIC miner, mine being the S19J Pro. So it gives us the IP address 192.168.86.247. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And up in our browser, we're now going to go to that IP address. So you're going to click a new browser tab and type in 192.168.86, and, and for me, 247. Your IP address will be different based off of your home subnet, and you'll hit enter. You're now going to be prompted for a username and password. The default username and password is root and root, R-O-O-T, R-O-O-T, and you're gonna hit enter. This is going to sign us in to our AMP miner for the very first time. Now, there's a lot going on here, None of this applies to us yet until we are logged in and have everything configured properly and we start mining. Then all these dashboards and all these pretty lights actually mean something. So you can go anywhere you want from here. For me, there's two things I like to do whenever I set up a new device on my network. Number one, give it a static IP address. Number two, change the local admin password. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So on the left-hand side, we have the option for IP settings. Go ahead and click that. After you click IP settings, it's going to give you all your current information about your unit, the MAC address, the IP address, the subnet, and then the name that it identifies with on your network. So for me, I'm gonna change that host name to make it even more identifiable just in case I have more of these units. So I am gonna have Antminer S19J Pro. Now for our protocol, I'm gonna change it to static. And this is where you're going to want to go ahead and set up static IP information that works best for you and your subnet. If this is completely out of your realm, don't worry about it. Keep it set to DHCP and go ahead and skip the step to set your device as a static device. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that our IP information is updated and our admin password has been updated as well, our next step is to update the firmware on our device. You never know how long these have been sitting in warehouses or at vendors. So it's always good to make sure you have the latest firmware. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it says firmware version Tuesday, October 19th, 2021, actually. Um, and so we want to update that because this is quite old. So our next step is to go over to bitmain.com again. Now that we're back over at bitmain.com, go up to customer support and go down to firmware download. Once you are there, you're going to want to go ahead and select your model. So it already has what our algorithm is, which is a SHA-256 BTC. On the right-hand side, you want to select the exact model you have. I have the Antminer S19J Pro. We're going to select that. And now it shows us here the latest firmware is actually published on April 26, 2022. So this is a much newer version than where we are. So go ahead and click Download. The latest firmware version will download in the bottom left-hand corner. Once it's finished, go back over to our miner interface. Once you're back over to your miner UI, you're going to go to the left-hand side and under system, you're going to click the arrow and then you're going to select firmware upgrade. Next, we're going to click the box to the right of firmware file and select that new firmware file that we downloaded. Once you have that selected, we're going to keep the same settings. So we don't want it to wipe out our IP address or wipe out our admin password we changed. So we're gonna keep that check and we're gonna click update. Allow this to go through, be patient. You don't wanna interrupt this in the middle of a firmware update and cause an issue with bricking the device or corrupting the device. So be patient and let this finish. 
if while you're waiting, the page comes up and says page can it cannot be displayed, don't worry. The actual miner is actually rebooting itself after it has applied the firmware update. You can actually hear it actually spooling up and then spooling back down. And look at that. It reloaded exactly the way that we expected. Fantastic. So we have accomplished our IP address settings. We've got our admin password in. We've got our firmware update completed. We are set up and ready to now configure this for mining. So our next step is to go over to the left-hand side to settings. And this is where you're going to go ahead and put in your pool address, as well as the miner and also as the password. So for this exercise, I'm actually going to be using pool in for the very first time. I've never used the pool in pool, but I've done my research and a lot of other miners are using pool in and very happy with it. So pause the video, go to the upper right hand corner, select register and set yourself up with an account for pool in then circle back around to the video. Okay, so now that we have our pull-in account set up, we're gonna go ahead and come back to the pull-in site and go to dashboard. Now, I totally forgot that I actually have a mini Dogecoin miner on pull-in, totally forgot about it. So if you're in my situation or you're just brand new to pull-in, either way, you're gonna do the same steps. Top left-hand corner, click the drop-down menu. Once you do that, there's a, there's a little blue icon with a plus next to it. You're gonna click on it. It's gonna create a new sub count. So in this case here, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this uh, Bitcoin Ant Miner. You can call it whatever you want. It's really just a way to identify it. You could even call it just Bitcoin Mining and have several Ant Miners on the same setup. So now we're gonna select BTC down below. Now we have three different options here. Read through them and figure out the one that's best for you. There's a few different ways you can do it. You can receive with mining pool account. And as you can see here, you get to earn interest on it, which is awesome. You can receive with a pull in wallet if you wanted to, or you can have it go right to your BTC address. In my situation, I'm going to select going right to my Bitcoin wallet, completely separate, but pick the choice that works best for you. If you're looking to set this up and maybe earn a little APY off of it or APR off of it then maybe the first one's best for you. Really decide on what's best for you and your investing and your total mining strategy. So I'm gonna select use your BTC address, click on that. And now it's gonna prompt me to add in my BTC address, add some notes in there and then hit create. Okay, so after you hit create, look at this. It gives us all the information we need to add into our, our Bitmain UI. So as you can see here, it's giving us the URL one, two, and three, as well as the worker and the password. So let's go ahead and copy the first one, go back over to our UI and look, pool one, bam. Let's go back over, copy the second one, third one, and now it wants the miner name. We can use the same miner name in all three. And then finally the password, which it wants one, two, three. Sure, why not? Next thing you can do is you can adjust the fan speed if you're interested. Now, keep in mind, the fan speed on these Bitmain ASIC miners adjust based off of the ambient temperature that it's pulling in. So the cooler the room is or the more airflow you have coming into this unit, the quieter it's going to be. So there's a lot of really good options out there. And I'll talk about the, the avenue I'm going to go in a future video talking about how I'm going to be providing airflow and dealing with the heat management for this S19J Pro. But for all intents and purposes today, we're leaving fan speed at 100% and mode, we're going to leave it to normal. And now we're going to go ahead and click save. Now that we have saved our settings for our miner, we're going to go ahead and click on dashboard. And it's going to take some time to start to see some stats in here. And you're going to start to hear your Bitmain ASIC miner start to spool up. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it one hour. It is currently 10 p.m. Eastern on the 5th of May. I'm going to wait one hour to 11 p.m. And we're going to check back here as well as if we go over to the pull in and go over to our pull in address and click on dashboard. This is where you want to check as well. So I'll see you guys in one hour. All right, miners, we are back in action and it has actually been an hour and 21 minutes. Now, as you can see up on our screen here, we are actually, our real-time hash rate is 105 tera hash and our average total hash rate is 106. So this is an advertised unit of 104 tera hash. We're actually a little bit above that, which is fantastic. 
This dashboard here, guys, has so much good information. The green normal bars across the top, always good to see. In the middle, you have some of your pool data. And then under that, you have a lot of really good data on temperatures. You can see the inlet temp as well as the outlet temp on the actual hashboard. And then at the very bottom, you have your fan speed. So study this, learn it, understand it. It'll be really helpful. Jumping over to Poolin, we can see here that it does show some wonky real time and 24 hour. Give it 24 hours total, even a few days total in order to start to see this kind of um, balance out and be a little bit more accurate to what you're seeing on your amp miner. But taking a look over on the left-hand side, you can see our total estimate. If we take that, which is a 0.00002435, and we go over to our friend over at CoinGecko and put that in there, we have made 88 cents in the last hour and 21 minutes. Cool. Well, let's talk about total profitability. So if you come over to ASIC miner value and you look up your exact model, for us, it's the S19J Pro, the 104 terahash unit, and you scroll to the very bottom and input your electric rate. That's super important. Hit apply. Back up to the top. You can see that we are now set up and estimated to do $12.51. Gives us $375.35 per month and $4,500 per year. Now, some things to take a look at. This is saying right here that our power consumption is uh, should be 3,068 watts. Well, let's go over to Wadham. Wadham is where we purchased our, our unit from and have partnered with their team. And if you go ahead over to Wadham, you go to equipment, you go to miners, you can then go down and you can scroll down to the Antminer S19 J Pro. So this unit here says 104 terahash. Well, we're at 105, 106. Awesome, win-win. But the power here says 3,068 watts. So if we go ahead and venture into our mining room and take a look at the watts that are listed, it says right now we're right around 5,150. Well, if we subtract what we had on our watt meter before we hooked up our ASIC miner, it was 1,840. So that puts us at 3,310 watts total being used at the wall. This is the type of information that you want to keep track of. You want to keep this in mind as you're starting to try to calculate out profitability, which is super important. Now, earlier in my video, I did say it was 3,050. That was incorrect because that is actually the S19J, which is a 100 terahash unit. The S19J Pro is the 104 terahash unit, and it does it advertises 3,068, but we are actually at 3,310. So always good to have a voltage meter if possible. Alrighty, guys. So let's take a look at the air coming out the rear side of this here from the exhaust. It says we're at 117 degrees Fahrenheit currently right now coming out the rear side. And we have our exhaust working in overtime right now in our mining room. We will be moving this out to our garage tonight. And then in the future, it'll actually move out to our mining shed that we're currently in the process of building. Well, if this video was helpful for you guys as new Bitmain owners, please leave a comment down below. Would love to hear from you as fellow brand new uh, Bitcoin miners. Other than that, guys, in two weeks, we're gonna have a follow-up video talking about our two-week profitability with the S19J Pro. Huge shout out to the team over at Wadham.io. I'll leave a link down below to those guys for partnering with the Hobbyist Miner community to bring you guys our very first Ant Miner. Well, that'll wrap things up for today. Have a good one, guys, and take care.